Welcome to a new Godot 3 game development series. In this series, we'll be talking about procedural content generation, or PCG, sometimes also called ProcGen. I'll be explaining and demonstrating some of the most common PCG algorithms and showing you how you can use them in your games. The first PCG topic we'll be looking at is mazes. For this part, we'll be using the recursive backtracker algorithm, which you can see an example of running here. This is also known as depth first search. And what it does is explore the whole area and carve out a maze as it goes. And it's one of the easier maze algorithms to implement, so it's a good one to start with. And so what it's based on is a grid. So we have a grid of squares. Let me restart it again here. It has, we have a grid of squares, and the algorithm explores the grid by cell by cell connecting them as it goes, but never crossing over itself. In mathematical terms, this is what's called a spanning tree. And this means that there's no loops, and there's only one path from any one point to another. But every point, every two points on the graph are connected. So there's always a route between point A and point B, and always only one route. And that's the recursive backtracker algorithm. So here's an overview of how the backtracker algorithm works. So we start by picking a starting cell. It could be anywhere on the grid and we mark it as having been visited. And then if any neighbors of that cell have not been visited, then we want to pick one of them randomly and remove the wall between them, add the current cell, the one we started with, to the stack, and make the chosen, the random chosen neighbor the current cell. And we mark that visited. And then if there aren't any unvisited neighbors, then we take the top cell from the stack and make it current. And we just keep doing that over and over from step two until there's no more unvisited cells in the whole grid. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you yet, don't worry. We will talk about what we mean by stack and what we mean by the walls between the cells. But this is the steps that it takes to make the maze, and this is the code we're going to write to generate our maze in Godot. Now the first step whenever you're doing any kind of procedural generation is to figure out how you're going to represent your data. Now since we're using Godot and we want a square grid, Godot has a tile map node built into it that's perfect for this. It's designed to handle a grid of squares. What we have to decide is how to represent the walls between the different nodes. And so here's a picture of a cell. This is one cell in the grid, and the cell has four walls. Each of those four walls can either be solid or it can be open. And we're going to, if we use binary representation for that, then we could say the, the wall, if it has a one, it is solid, and if it has a zero, it's open. So that means that with any combination of four zeros and ones, we could represent what state the cell is in, which walls are solid and which walls are open. So if we use a single bit to represent each wall state, then a four bit number is going to represent the entire cell's state. And it would look something like this. Now we could represent these in whatever order we like, but I'm just going to use the order west, south, east, north. So the rightmost digit is going to represent the north wall, and that's the ones place. The east wall is the twos place, the south wall is the fours place, and the west wall is the eights place. And so now any four bit number is going to represent any possible arrangement of these walls, and that will be a number between 0 and 15. And every possible tile, if we lay them out, is going to look like this. So these are all the possible combinations of tiles, and that number in the center is what binary number represents that cell. If you get a tile set, a set of images, with 16 tiles representing these 16 combinations, you can use that tile set to represent your maze. And so for this project, I've selected Kenny's Road Textures Pack. And if we make these into a tile set in Godot, with the tile ID matching the wall pattern that you see here on the screen, we can use the tile map data to record our maze data as well. So whichever 
tile ID is in a particular cell, say for example if it's number 9, then we know that the east and south walls are open. So this is really nice because it means we won't need a separate data structure to store information about our walls. We can just use the tile ID in our tile map. So if you download the starting project, you'll get a scene containing a tile map with the tile set attached containing all of the road tiles that we just looked at. Okay, so let's attach a script and we're going to start by defining some properties. Firstly, I have the four direction values, the north, east, south, and west, like we looked at in the picture, and their binary values for what place they represent. And just naming them N, E, S, and W is going to make it a little easier to refer to them in code so that down below, if we put the number 8, well, why is the 8 there? Well, we're talking about the west wall. We'll just use a W. And then this dictionary here, cell walls, is a mapping between those four values and what direction they represent, what, what actual physical direction on the grid is that wall on. So the vector, the up vector is the north wall, the down vector is the south wall, and so on. Next, I have a few more variables that I'm going to track. Tile size is going to be the tile size that we have set in our tile map which right now is 64 by 64, but if you decide you want to use different size tiles, uh, that can change. And then width and height is how big we want our map to be, how many tiles wide and how many tiles tall. So that's how big a maze we're going to make. And then here I'm getting a reference to the tile map, just putting in the variable map because I don't want to have to type dollar sign tile map and do that lookup all the time. This is just a convenient way to cache that get node lookup. And then we have our ready function where we're just going to randomize so that we can get a nice random distribution. We're going to set that tile size variable based on the cell size we've set in the tile map node. And then we're going to call our make maze function, which is kind of the point of this exercise. And before we can generate the maze, we're going to need a helper function that if we give it a cell and a list of all the cells that are unvisited will return a list of which neighbors are unvisited right because that's how we in our algorithm check or choose which cell to move into next so given our current cell and all the unvisited ones this will go through and check each of the neighbors and if the neighbor is unvisited add it to a to a list and return that list so, so that way we know which potential cells we can choose randomly to move into. And that'll take us to our make maze function. So the make maze function is going to start by declaring a couple of variables that we're going to need. We're going to have an array called unvisited that's going to keep track of the tiles that we haven't visited yet. And then we're going to have another array to be our stack. So GDScript does not have a stack data type. But we can use an array because we can use the append method, which tacks an object onto the end of the array. And then we can use the pop back method, which will remove the rightmost element of the array. And so that'll make it act like a stack. Then we're going to clear the map and set all of its tiles to solid by looping through the width and the height. We're going to add every tile to the unvisited array, because to start with, they are all unvisited. And then we're going to set every cell to every cell location to north, east, south, west, which combined together is 15, and that's the solid, the solid green tile. Then we're going to pick our current starting cell. Uh, we're going to start in the upper left-hand corner, but you could start in any cell of the map and it would the maze would work just as well. We're just going to pick the top left corner and remove that from the unvisited list. And then we're ready to start the actual maze generation algorithm now that we have everything set up. Now some of you may be wondering what this, what's going on here with this weird symbol here in between the different direction letters. and. In GDScript and in most other languages, this is what's called the bitwise OR. 
What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the definition here. So when you use a bitwise operator between two numbers, it means that it operates on those numbers as if they were in binary. So digit by digit in binary. So for example, if I have 11 or 5, my result is going to be 15. And the reason for that is if we look at the numbers in binary, this is the number 11, this is the number 5. And we do an OR operation on each digit. Well, 1 OR 1 is 1. 1 OR 0 is 1, and etc. And so that's why we wind up with a 15. So when we have our four direction values, and we do N or E or S or W, and we get 15, that's because... Remember, north is 1, south is 2, or sorry, east is 2, south is 4, and west is 8. So 1 or 2 or 4 or 8 results in 15. And that's why we have that. So this is a very pretty common operation when you're using different, what are called bit flags, different positions in a binary number to represent different values. And so that's what we're doing with our 4-bit number here. Each bit is representing one of the walls and oring them together will give us the result of having all four walls. Now there's also a bitwise operator called AND which we're going to use later so I'm going to explain that in a little bit. So now we're ready to run our algorithm and here it is. So as long as the unvisited array is not empty, there's still unvisited cells, we're going to keep doing this procedure. And the procedure is just like we talked about in text earlier. We're going to check the neighbors of the current cell. Right, this, this is our function that gives us how many unvisited neighbors we have. So if we have at least one unvisited neighbor, we will pick a random one, put the current cell on the stack, then we need to remove the walls between the two. So next minus current is going to give us a direction vector for which direction we just moved in. And so using that, we can get the cell at current and we can subtract whatever direction that is. So for example, if the current cell has a value of 15, we're going to subtract cell walls dir. Well, dir is, let's say we moved up. If we moved up, then the direction is going to be 0, negative 1. Well, 0, negative 1 means we remove the north wall, so we subtract 1. So our 15 will become 14, and that is a cell with the north wall open. For the next cell, we do the opposite. We just reverse the direction because we want to remove the south wall of the wall of the cell above us, right? If we move the north wall from the current cell, we need to remove the south wall from the one we moved into. Then we set the map cells to match those values, right? These are the values we calculated these values, we just we set the current cell to 14, we set the next cell. Then we make the next cell the current cell and take it out of the unvisited array. And now we have a new current and we'll do it again. And we'll keep doing it again unless we have no neighbors. If we have no neighbors, then if there's something in the stack, we're going to pop the next one off of the stack and use that. That's the backtracking part. That's going to make us go back. Now, if we run this, we're going to see a maze, but it's going to just pop up. Boom, there's our maze, right? We started here and off we went. And that's nice, but it's also sometimes kind of nice to see everything running. So at the end of the while loop here we can add a yield. And if we yield, we'll say get tree idle frame. So that means we want to basically update the screen. It's going to update the drawing on the screen every frame or every iteration through this while loop. And so we'll see the maze sort of get generated slowly. And so you see how it is backtracking. I made the size a little bigger than the screen is, so it's going off the screen a little bit. We'll have to we can correct that. 
but you can see we're slowly going around and uncovering tiles and then backing up when we hit a dead end. So I'm just going to update the size here. And so now we have a maze generator. Now I've kept this very generic to begin with because there's a lot of different applications where you could use this in your game. And the maze generation algorithm itself doesn't really change depending on what you are using it for. So in the next video, we'll talk about some applications of this and some ways you can use this in your game to generate, say, a city map, to um, populate it with decorations and things like that. You can use this for an isometric map. You can use this with a 3D grid map. There's a lot of different possibilities. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. Uh, please leave your questions and comments in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.